humorous, sailor, determined, competitive, visionary, entrepreneur, pioneer, winner, Roy Brown. A grandfather, a father, a husband, and a family man, Roy Brown is the one individual who changed the landscape of a profession. Roy Brown is internationally known as the face behind Roy Corporation. Roy Corporation is the largest, most well-known appraiser and brokerage in all of Canada. In fact, Canadian healthcare professionals have been seeking the appraisal, brokerage and consulting services of Roy Corporation since the year of 1974. It all started when Roy Brown stepped into a job as a salesperson in 1948 at the young age of 18 with a mind and a heart to strive for more. I was working with your mom in a place and we decided we were going out together. So I got a job with a husband of one of the workers there. So that's how they hired me. Right. And uh, Mr. Gowan, I came into the office, he said, who are you? And I told him. He said, uh, well, who hired you? I said, I'm the new salesman. He said, who hired you? He said, Stan. He said, we can't afford him, let alone you. <laughs> So he said, but now that we're, you're here, we'll make the best of it. So for the first uh, six months or a year, I rode the streetcar because I didn't have a car. And uh, I had a lot of pimples, so I didn't like to go in and look at all the nurses, you know, that were in these offices. But anyways, I managed with one year, I outstripped the other salesman. Uh, back in the early days of dentistry, a salesperson would go around and call upon a dental office and this would be the burr sample. So these are the original dental drills and burrs. They're all made of metal. Uh, there was no diamond at the time. And this was the kit that a salesman would take around, or a saleswoman, it was all men at that time. And they would go to the doctor and say, which of these burrs do you want to order today? They all had numbers. And unfortunately in this set, I'm missing only one. One other unique item, and many of the younger dentists today would find this hard to believe, but this is a scaler and curette sample from a company called Ransom and Randolph. We're no longer in business again. And back in the day, the scaler and curette tips were individually removed from a single handle and just the tips were purchased and sterilized and reused. So that is my father's scaler and curette kit. Again, I would suspect that's probably from sometime in the 50s. Unfortunately, there's no date on it. During those times, the government suspected that a few major dental supplies companies were getting together to engage in price fixing a method with which all of them would make a considerable profit, but which would leave dentists in a dire state. Roy Brown stepped into the manager position at the Associated Dental Cooperative then, where he had begun in 1948. ADC was the outcast, the outsider. But dentists decided to buy shares in this cooperative, perhaps as a sign of solidarity against the alleged combine. Eventually, Roy Brown became the president. His achievements included introducing the high-speed hand pieces, disposable needles, equipment leasing, and designing and manufacturing open concept cabinetry. This is a very interesting document. It was a report on a suspected dental combine. It was published in July of 1948, and the title is An Investigation into an Alleged Combine in the Manufacture and Supply of Dental Supplies in Canada. And what was suspected was that a couple of companies were colluding and getting together saying, as long as we all charge the same price, uh, we'll all make a nice profit. So let's agree to do a little price fixing. And the Government of Canada published this and the Commissioner and the Dental and the Combines Investigation Act at the time uh, basically said in this report, uh, a combine exists in Canada and that the dentists of Canada have been treated unfairly in pricing. And shortly after this report came out, the Associated Dental Cooperative was formed and the Associated Dental Cooperative was individually owned by dentist shareholders and only dentists and it was a co-op and it was formed and my father ended up managing that company in response to this. We introduced a lot of, a lot of new things. We were kind of the outcast, you might say. We weren't part of the big, the big four and uh, the sales talk that really got them in was to tell them about the alleged combined investigation into a dental combine and even though it was didn't finally settle it convinced everybody with all the evidence that there was in fact a combine sure and that's why a lot of the dentists 
decided to buy shares in our company and it was a cooperative. So a lot of the people supporting the Associated Dental Cooperative were to some extent protesting against the big four who were price fixing against them. Well yes, most of them were veterans because this was 48 and most of them back in Canada for two or three years after the war and it kind of rubbed them the wrong way. I mainly worked my way up from a salesman to be the manager and eventually the president and uh, my specialty was helping the dentists find locations and helping them get leases and set up equipment and sell equipment. At any rate, after 25 years and three months, they tried to demote me. How'd you feel about that? I didn't like it. After 25 years and three months of untiring service, ADC proposed to demote Roy. They wanted me to become the manager of the Toronto branch and not the head of all of Canada. Well, you were the general manager of the whole firm by that time. Yeah, I was. But Roy had more in him. With determination and the support of his wife, Joan, Roy forged ahead and started his business in his own home, known as Roy Management, in 1974. So I came home and I said to your mom, 25 years, you know, I, I think I'll start my own business. And what gave me the idea was that the dentists all had what they called a piece of paper. They're saying they were, you know, professional dentists. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a piece of paper. So they encouraged me to go back to the University of Toronto and after eight years I finally graduated from a business diploma course. So anyways, I started doing appraisals and I said to your mom, which is Joan, uh, let's start right here in the house. Didn't you help us carry the desk up to my office? Well, I remember, I was, I was 74, <laughs> I was 11. And I still remember the day you came home in 1974. You were in your suit and you had your briefcase and I was down in the basement. You came down, you proudly announced to me that you quit your job today. <laughs> Of course, 11 years of age, I didn't really know what that meant. Yeah. I didn't realize it might mean, you know, a few tough years ahead. And then you and I, we built your desk up in the second story of the house, and in the house I live in today. That's right, you bought it now. When he first started the company, I was 11 years of age in 74, and this room was all wooden studs with revealed insulation, and he put a little desk up here with an old rotary phone and a notepad and a piece of paper and he made his first call saying, I'm now appraising dental practices. And our family was raised in this home, and this was the room where Roy spent most of his working hours looking out the beautiful view to his yard. And he raised his family in this home and then created the company that we have today. Here in this family photograph, I have my father, my older sister, Sally, Lanny, Debbie, and my mother, Joan, and myself. It all started with one phone call. That marked the beginnings of Roy Corporation as it is known today. And Lanny, your sister, worked for us for 13 years and she helped put things together and she went out and sold practices and still a lot of the dentists ask about her. Sure. And uh, you know, I dragged you out on a few appraisals. Yeah, you took me out. I was 14 when you took me out on the first one. And we went to Calgary. It was the oldest, Lanny, who really helped out at the beginning, right at the tender age of 13. We're here in the front foyer where my mother and father would greet the client and his or her spouse and they would then enter into what we called the boardroom at the time which is the family living room. This is where they would have their meeting, talk to the client about his or her objectives, the retirement plan and what they were going to do with the dental practice. They would usually agree to do an appraisal, probably agree to list the practice for sale and then my father would seek out a buyer and they would sit around this living room have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, and sometimes even a glass of champagne to celebrate success. And I was 11 years of age at the time, and my mother would say, now you go to your room and you stay down the hall and, and don't interfere. And I would always open my bedroom door and I would listen. And I'd stick my nose out of the bedroom door from time to time and watch what was transpiring. And I'll never forget this moment. My father had met with a dentist, a successful transaction had been negotiated, and to the best of my knowledge, it was exactly here in 1974, on this very table, where one of the first transactions was ever signed in the history of Roy Corporation. Joan and Roy were a team, and Timothy Brown always watched. Roy Corporation's wheels had started to turn. If we use the real estate market today, realtors today still give free appraisals away in the hopes of getting the listing. Yeah. And we know that some dental practice appraisers do the same thing, is that they say, no charge for the appraisal if you'll just give me the listing. But you began creating the perception and the real uh, fact that appraisal has value. And had you not charged the feedback then, 
Many of the people appraising practices today would get nothing for them. No. So you pioneered the value of an appraisal, not only the appraisal itself. Well, that's true. Um, the dentist, or the, yeah, maybe the dentist, or many men, a few women, they would appreciate having their whole history and all their assets and finances and staff and photographs of their office. Now they like to see it all packaged. Right. Many of them say, I've worked here 20, 30 years, maybe 40, and it's nice to see it's all packaged with a price on it. Right. And we do all the equipment. Uh, a lot of them don't. They just take a ballpark figure and say your equipment's worth 100000 We list every major piece of equipment in some minor, and we put down all the serial numbers, and we tell the dentist what we think it's worth in his practice, which varies, mm -hmm. and we put in what it would cost to replace it. Roy Corporation's first sale was $28,000 and in the 40 years since its inception, it has documented $2 billion worth of dental practice value. And to think it all started in 1974, when it was first realized by pioneer Roy Brown that appraisals have value. Well, you know that we have uh, in our corporate archives over 6,000 dental practice appraisals so far, and they're done for many reasons, insurance, estate planning, sometimes for matrimonial dissolution, uh, and well over 1,500 of those appraisals have so far turned into somebody to sell their practice that we have exclusively managed here at Roy. Uh, you know, most of our history is in Ontario, but we are nationwide now, growing very strong in Western Canada and very, very strong in the Maritimes. And we do predict, Dad, that sometime in the next 10 years, upwards of another 5,000 dental practices are going to sell across Canada, mostly because of the baby boomers and the aging population. Let's put it all into perspective. Today, the average practice sells for a million dollars. As of 2012, there are actually 11,000 dental offices in Canada. Within 75% of these practices, only one dentist is practicing. The whole industry is worth about $10 billion, but only $3 billion has been documented. Within those large numbers, 6,000 dental practices have been appraised by Roy Corporation until now in their archives. In the next five to ten years, 5,000 dental practices will be sold or bought. Taking Roy Corporation to a higher level is Roy's son, Timothy Brown, who under the expert leadership of his father was groomed at a very young age to take over his father's business. Back in the 1970s, uh, actually 1970 to be exact, uh, the Associate Dental Cooperative, which my grandfather was a senior manager at, created a publication for the dentists called The First Day Through the First Year. And it has very many useful um, things for the first uh, time you start a practice uh, and set up. Well, Roy Corporation decided to go back from 1970 and 2012 create the first day through first year uh, new version. There's uh, many of the same principles from the original that my grandfather helped write, but uh, this one has a little bit of updated stuff and uh, along with Patterson and BMO, Roy Corporation is giving back to the students again. Timothy Brown, the youngest of Roy and Joan's children, completed his post-secondary education and obtained his business broker's license in 1984. In the 1960s and early 70s, my father was a sailboat racer, and he was a very successful one. He raced a sailboat style called a shark, uh, like the great white shark. And my father became a very competitive and winning sailboat racer. This is a trophy that was awarded to him four years in a row for being first place for the Hinterhaller Trophy. I think what my father learned from this was he's a competitor, and he can win. And at the time, he was working for a very large dental company, and he was a very successful executive. He hadn't started Roy Corporation yet, but I think sailboat racing taught him that he can compete, he can win. My grandfather came strolling down the driveway in his uh, Lincoln Town Car, pulling some weird object that I had no idea what it was. When I ran behind the car, it was sneezy on the back, and this was uh, what I later found out to be a sailboat called a Laser One. 
as I as we went up there, he taught me how to sail on this boat. And before I was nine, I could sail it by myself. So over the years, I've managed to talk to many people that knew my grandfather raced against him back in the 60s and the 70s, and it's pretty consistent what they have to say about him, that he was a, a very competitive, but a very fair, and a very accomplished sailor. He continues on his path of success. In the 1990s, when Roy Brown decided to slow down and was appointed the Honorable Lifetime Chairman of the Board, Timothy was appointed the Vice President in 1994, then President, then CEO. Timothy has written over 75 practice management columns, spoken at hundreds of seminars and conventions about dentographics, which covers his study of future trends in dental manpower, practice valuations, and patient behavior. He also introduced a formal locus registry in Canada. When I was a very young man, my father instilled a work ethic in me about cooperating and, and working with other people and he had a number of projects that we worked on when we were very young and when I was six years of age my father renovated this basement and at the time he decided to put paneling on the wall and he engaged me in that project as a father and son moment and he and I signed this wall and we put our names and we put a date to it in 1969 and he was engaging me and, and we were working together and, and I think my father saw the vision and he had the foresight that one day his son would work with him in the family business and of course I didn't see that until a much later age but it was a very touching moment and when my wife and I renovated this home very recently we removed the paneling and we uncovered my father's and my signatures from 1969 and I'll never forget this moment and my father had forgotten about it and I had no recollection and we've preserved it and we're going to build a frame around it and this was the formation of my working relationship with my father. I think back to a trip I had back when I, I believe I was in grade 7, I was probably about 13 years old and I spent a week with my grandparents down in Florida. And I remember when I left Florida after spending the full seven days with my grandfather, I learned something about how to, how to conduct myself, how to handle myself, how to treat other people. I still think back that was almost 17 years ago, I still remember that. One thing you may not know about my grandfather is that uh, whether you were you know, in a business meeting, lots on the golf course, or even at a family dinner, he always had a joke. And uh, it was a new joke every day, or every time you saw him. And uh, the one thing about his jokes is they were all very, very corny. <laughs> and, and I laugh because uh, I love corny jokes because of that. I would describe my grandfather, Roy Brown, as principled. He was a visionary, he was also a pioneer, and he is an incredible man. Knock, knock. Who's there? Rob. Rob who? And he'll always be there for you. <laughs> Even today, it is Roy Brown who everyone associates as being the starter, as being the man behind the success of Roy Corporation, with Roy trademarking iDentist an investor dentist in 2010. However, it is always the person that Roy Brown is which continues to inspire the values and work ethic which he continues to pass on to the next generations.